Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today you will learn about echocardiography probe positioning and scanning techniques. The image on the left will show the patient position and the ultrasound probe placement. And the right image will show the ultrasound image that is formed. The first view that is taken in echocardiography is the parasternal long axis view. It's a very important view. To get this view, Place the patient in either the supine or left lateral decubitus position. In this image, the patient is in the supine position. Place the sector or phased array probe just to the left of the sternal notch. The sternal notch is palpable, so it is easy to find it. The second coastal cartilage attaches to the sternal notch. The second intercostal space is just below this sternal notch, so you can start by placing the probe at this point. This red dot is the probe indicator or the orientation marker. The indicator must face the patient's right shoulder. The probe is in a 10 o'clock position. In echocardiography, keep in mind that the indicator is present on the right side of the screen. This is opposite to standard ultrasound, where the indicator is on the left side of the screen. So make sure that the indicator is on the right side before starting the scan. Sweep the probe between the second and the fifth intercostal spaces while keeping it close to the left sternal border and you will be able to get this image. This is the parasternal long axis view of the heart. Starting from the top of the image, this anechoic chamber is the right ventricle. The right ventricle is the anterior most chamber, which is why we see it first. After the right ventricle, we will find this thick echogenic wall. This is the interventricular septum, which is present between the right and left ventricles. Behind the septum, we find a larger chamber. This large anechoic chamber is the left ventricle. The left ventricle is larger than the right ventricle. The left ventricle is connected to the ascending aorta. This tubular area is the ascending aorta. The aortic valve is also present here. It is not visible in this image because the valve is open. The posterior most chamber is the left atrium. And this valve between the left atrium and left ventricle is the mitral valve. You can also see the anterior mitral valve leaflet. This is the anterior mitral valve leaflet. And the leaflet opposite to it is the posterior mitral valve leaflet. These linear echogenic structures are the papillary muscles. This hypochoic area posterior to the left atrium is the descending thoracic aorta. Here is another image showing the probe position in a patient lying in supine position. The indicator is directed towards the patient's right shoulder. The left lateral decubitus position brings the heart closer to the ribs and moves the lungs away from the parasternal window. So, if you are having trouble finding a good image with the patient in supine position, switching to a left lateral decubitus position can be helpful. Make sure that the indicator is towards the patient's right shoulder. Now we will look at how to get the right ventricle inflow view. This view is also a part of the left parasternal long axis view. The left lateral decubitus position is preferred. From the parasternal long axis view position, which we saw earlier, angulate the probe towards the patient's right hip. Tilt the probe in a manner that the probe head faces the patient's right hip and the probe tail is slightly facing the patient's left shoulder. This will be a slight angulation, which will give you the right ventricular inflow view. This image is formed. The right ventricular inflow view shows the chambers which receive blood from the body. We can see the inferior vena cava, which drains blood into the right atrium and the right ventricle. Next view, is the right ventricular outflow view. It is a good view of the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary valve. 
To get this view, slightly angulate the probe towards the patient's left shoulder. With some angulation adjustments, you should also be able to see the left ventricle and part of the interventricular septum. Now we will look at the parasternal short axis views at different levels. The first level scanned is the aortic valve level. It is considered the starting point for short axis views. From the parasternal long axis view, rotate the probe 90 degrees clockwise to point the indicator towards the patient's left shoulder and adjust the probe with small sweeps, rotations, and angulations until you get this type of image. You will see the aortic valve in the center. The aortic valve cusps give an appearance that is similar to the logo of Mercedes-Benz. That is why it is called the Mercedes-Benz sign. In this image, the right atrium is to the left of the aortic valve, and just above the right atrium, this valve, is the tricuspid valve, and after that is the right ventricular outflow tract, which includes the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary valve is seen here. From the aortic valve level, slightly angulate the probe superiorly until you get this type of image. This is the pulmonary bifurcation view. You will see the main pulmonary artery dividing into the left and right pulmonary arteries. Here is another image showing the pulmonary bifurcation, the right and left pulmonary arteries. The aortic root is seen in the middle in cross section and it is surrounded by the right ventricular outflow tract. This image shows the pulmonary bifurcation level with slight clockwise rotations and small superior sweeps. We can see a part of the left atrium as well as a part of the superior vena cava. To reach the mitral valve level, slightly slide and angulate the probe downwards towards the left ventricle apex from the aortic valve level view, and you will reach the mitral valve level. The right ventricle will appear at the top of the image. Then we will see the echogenic interventricular septum, then the left ventricle outflow tract, where we will see the mitral valve leaflets. In the image, the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve is seen above the posterior valve leaflet. From the mitral valve view, slightly slide and angulate the probe downwards towards the apex until you see the papillary muscle level. This is how the papillary muscle level appears. Inside the left ventricle, these structures are the papillary muscles. In the image, the anterolateral papillary muscle is seen on the right side and the posteromedial papillary muscle is present on the left side in this view. The apical four-chamber view is another important view in echocardiography. It is obtained by placing the patient in either the supine or the left lateral decubitus position. The apical four-chamber view is taken after the parasternal short axis view. So from the parasternal short axis view, slide the probe downwards until you see the tip of the left ventricle apex. Keep the indicator pointed towards the patient's left shoulder or left side between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock positions in this manner. Then tilt the probe towards the patient's foot. The probe tail will be towards the patient's foot and the probe head will be towards the patient's head. You will be able to get the four-chamber view of the heart. Slight anti-clockwise rotation can be used for adjustment to get the best view. In this image, the probe is placed with the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. This position is preferred because it brings the apex closer to the chest wall. This will be the image formed. The left atrium and ventricle are seen on the right side in the image. And the right atrium and ventricle are seen on the left side. The left atrium and ventricle are larger than the right atrium and ventricle. The mitral valve is seen between the left atrium and ventricle. The posterior mitral valve leaflet is attached to the left ventricle wall and the anterior leaflet is attached to the interventricular septum. 
the tricuspid valve is present between the right atrium and ventricle. The anterior tricuspid valve leaflet is attached to the right ventricle wall, and the septal leaflet is attached to the interventricular septum. You can also see the descending thoracic aorta near the left atrium. And down here, this groove, is the right lower pulmonary vein. From the four-chamber view, angulate the probe more towards the patient's head to get the apical five-chamber view. This view shows the aortic root and the aortic valve, in addition to the four heart chambers. Then we can move on to the apical two-chamber view, which focuses on the left heart chambers. From the four-chamber view, specifically the three o'clock position, Rotate the probe approximately 90 degrees anti-clockwise to direct the indicator towards the patient's head till we only see the left atrium and left ventricle. This small vessel near the left atrium is the coronary sinus. After the two-chamber view, we can get the three-chamber view which shows the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the left atrium as well as the aortic root. From the two-chamber view, rotate the probe anti-clockwise to direct the indicator towards the patient's right shoulder to get this view. The subxiphoid or the subcostal view can be taken if we have trouble with an apical four-chamber view. The patient lies in the supine position with the knees flexed. The probe is placed below the xiphoid process, under the ribs, with the indicator in the 3 to 5 o'clock position. You will get a four-chamber view from a subcostal approach. From the subcostal four-chamber view, rotate the probe 90 degrees anticlockwise to direct the indicator towards the patient's head in approximately the 12 o'clock position to get the subcostal inferior vena cava long axis view. This view is helpful in examining the IVC. This is the IVC in longitudinal view, draining into the right atrium. The suprasternal long axis view is helpful in examining the aortic arch. To get this view, the patient lies in the supine position with the neck extended. Then place the probe in the suprasternal notch with the indicator towards the patient's head. The probe is pointed downwards. You will get this image. We can see the aortic arch with the ascending aorta, the descending aorta, and the three branches. The first one is the innominate artery or the brachiocephalic trunk. The second branch is the left carotid artery. And the third branch is the subclavian artery. The right pulmonary artery is seen in cross section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.